I'd only been to the UK before actually once for a rugby tour uh, back when I was in high school and so I really didn't have any idea what I was supposed to be expecting. The vibrancy of the place is just stunning. There's this amazing sense of, of history. There have been so many great figures who have studied here. It's really, really inspiring. The connections and the networks of individuals that you get to know here, people who are going to go back to their home countries all across the world and we're going to be influential, important people. Studying in the UK can seriously change the course of your life. In this film, some influential Canadians talk about what they got from their time in the UK. from a Canadian perspective is perhaps culturally the closest cousin that we have. But at the same time, there's enough cultural difference there that you definitely feel like you're arriving in a foreign country when you first get there. It was really only when I came to study as a Commonwealth scholar that I fully understood uh, the country, um, uh, its richness, um, and certainly the educational experience was uh, remarkable. I worked in the city for a couple of years. My experience in the city helped develop an appreciation for the strengths and the limits of markets and a global outlook because really the city of London is the center of global finance. Those building blocks were really developed in the UK, the intellectual side, a sense of uh, how far one needs to stretch, the contacts and, and connections, and also that global, more cosmopolitan outlook that's, in my opinion, uh, essential to uh, succeed in today's world. It was because of my time at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and the experiences that I was uh, gaining there that I was offered the opportunity to volunteer with UNICEF in Somalia. And that experience, which ended up becoming my master's thesis, set me on a course to work in different war zones around the world and which ultimately led me to start the organization War Child. So it's not even a stretch to say that that year that I spent in England really profoundly changed the course of my professional career. I moved here really because I knew that London in particular was such a wonderful city for music. In fact, I think the best in the world. I had come here for summer courses every year since the age of 15. I had done one uh, when I was 12 years old, actually, through the Royal Academy of Music in London. And Sir Simon Rattle, conductor of the Villiers and Philharmonic, was one of the other students in that course. A venue like we're in today, Reading Town Hall, uh, there are many uh, such venues up and down the country as well. They have a wonderful sound and great character, and you know, you can imagine a choir performance in here. Go! Go, go, go! And a boy, great time. As a Canadian international, I had reached the top of the game in Canada. It was only by going to the UK that I was allowed to be exposed to better players, better competition and I really learned a lot about the game. He realizes that we're pretty close to stealing this ball. So you may have noticed by my name and Gareth yeah, well, Reese that I, I have some Welsh blood in me. Uh, I was picked to play for Canada against Wales in 1993 and uh, it was a victory for Canada. My good mate from Ontario, uh, Al Sharon, scored the winning try and I was able to convert to win by two points. So great day for our family and a great day for Canadian rugby to go to one of the hallowed turfs of world rugby and uh, get a famous result for Canada. I attended the University of Toronto, I was organ scholar of Trinity College for a couple of years, and then moved on to the Royal College of Music in London. It really accentuated the vocation that I have to be part of the British tradition as a church musician, as an organist, in the music that I write. Certainly in Anglican churches like the one where I work, and certainly given my own personal heritage, the connection with Britain and things that are British is extremely strong. I very much write in the tradition that's been established in, in the British colleges and churches. And that's really been part of my life and I continue to work in that tradition now. So why don't we take a look at the POD shots? As I grew up and realized that I was really interested in things like writing and music and theater, it became clearer and clearer to me that England was you know, if you're an English-speaking person, it's one of the places that you really want to go because it's the home of so much of, 
of what seems to be part of your culture. So was it the director's idea? When I talked to my students here and they talk about the things that they like watching on television, inevitably they're going to tell me about some English program that they have recently discovered, even if it's Doctor Who. Uh, you know, they're not even aware that it's had all the incarnations that it's had, but they're just blown away by the fact that there's this kind of edgy, intense stuff going on. At the end of my undergraduate studies, I took a study tour through West Africa and fell in love with Ghana and decided to do my research there. I went to Cambridge University for my PhD, and it was so rewarding in terms of understanding a different culture Although I had worked in Ghana, but this was a Western culture, not a developing country culture. And it was as much culture shock going to Britain initially as it was to Ghana. I was learning to become an anthropologist, but I was also learning how to become a citizen of the world. Uh, the notes have Her Majesty on, the, uh, the most commonly used note, the $20 bill. She's there with pride. Very tight links between the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England. The history of England and Canada, whether it's through business, whether it's through sport, whether it's through culture, is ongoing. And I think there's a real, um, to use a rugby term, a camaraderie there. There's an understanding of uh, the cultures. It's a wonderfully spiritual feeling, uh, as well as an artistic one to be inheritors, if only for a small amount of time, of a tradition which is much greater than we are, much longer than we could possibly live, and will certainly exceed our lifespans. Writing, theater, film, anything where the language is at the center of it, then that link to England is always going to be extremely important. It's almost one of the essences of study in those areas. There's direct very strong intellectual ties between the great universities in our two countries and I was fortunate to benefit from that uh, through the uh, by the grace of the British Council.